What's up guys, welcome back to the Shop Mini RC. I'm Ken, and today we're gonna to be doing some upgrades on this FCX24 that we've got. Let me show you. All right guys, we've got this chassis kit from Next Speed, a servo, a servo, uh, mount and well i just noticed oddly enough a red servo horn i don't know why it's red if the i guess because the servo is red don't know what's going on there but it would have been nice to be blue um steering links suspension links some c-ubs and some inner rear portal axle covers and you know what we just realized this guy's all wheel steering that means we can't use these guys maybe we'll use them on something else that's unfortunate. We have plenty of uh, FCX axles, so I'm sure we have something we can use them on. And then these cool ass blue bead locks. So these are exciting. This is what I'm most excited about, I think. And the chassis. Chassis is cool too. I mean, it's all it's all good looking. It looks good. I like the way all of it looks. The blue is gorgeous. So let's just let's check it out. So I guess the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to build this uh, this chassis here. One thing I do like about Next Speed, one of the few things that a lot of other manufacturers don't do is include actual instructions. So pretty nice that they've got instructions so that we can see how the chassis goes together. I dig that. It also lets you use your stock body clips, which is pretty awesome. And gives us an actual skid plate. There's our carbon fiber chassis rails. And so many, so many little plastic baggies. Interesting. It's mounted straight to the plate. That's cool, I guess. It's using 1.4s, looks like. Jeez, opening the bags is gonna take us longer than putting it all together. All right, so looks like we got the front and the rear. We're just going to go ahead and start with the skid. Does this have a front and back? I don't think it does. I think it's the same. Either way, yeah, so it shouldn't matter which side we go on. Whoa. I think this is the uh, mount for the servo, for the shift servo. That's what's kind of going there. Yeah. I think that's kind of what's going on here. So now we've got to put all of these little body clip pieces in. I guess they go like this. Actually, yeah, let's put these in first. But maybe we should have put these in before we put our rails together in hindsight. Um, we'll see how difficult they are to, to get the screws into here.
Eh, not too bad. I guess we're okay. I was worried we wouldn't have a good angle on it. Depending on your screwdriver, I suppose, or your, your driver set, um, you might have trouble. So maybe consider put the, putting the clips on first. The body mounting plastic deals here. All right, we'll be back once we get those all in. A few moments later. All right, we got these guys all in. Make sure you put the uh, front and rears on the inside and the middle ones go on the outside. Okay, also we noticed something in the instructions. It says Loctite all screws. Now, you know we are about Loctite. If you watch this channel much, we love Loctite, but do not Loctite these, okay? You only Loctite metal into metal. Um, if you Loctite metal into any kind of plastic, it could degrade the plastic and just cause it to become brittle and break. So Loctite these screws into your belly plate if you want, Loctite any screws that go with these nuts. Um, but don't Loctite the screws that go into the plastic. You can even Loctite the screws that go into this. That's fine. Just not the plastic. Alrighty. Now we need to put this brace in here. And then I guess we're done. And we just got to put all of the parts in it. Alrighty. And now we get to take this guy apart. So once we get the, all the parts out of the chassis, we'll weigh the two chassis and then you can compare the weight and see if we're saving some weight. I suspect we should save a little weight, but I don't know. I've never actually pulled one of these chassis out of a stock FCX. So they could be super light for all I know. One thing for sure though, the aluminum skid plate That'll be nice. It gives us a little bit more weight down low, probably more than the stock plastic wood. So even if they're similar weight, uh, the weight distribution will probably be better as far as the center of gravity on the carbon fiber chassis. Alrighty. And this truck is all stock with the exception of the rear steer. We added the rear steer. But beyond that, it's all stock. So if you have a stock truck, it should be very similar. Look at that. That's a cr cracked front end that we had to repair. I don't even know how that happened, but it happened. All right. So I guess we should just pull all of our shocks off. And then our upper links. And our lower links. Oop, don't lose these guys, these little bushings. out there's our two axles now we have just our chassis and electronics and stuff so next we'll pull the motor out I guess it's actually actually the transmission we're gonna be pulling the transmission with the motor attached out okay and remember you've got your your shift servo here with this linkage so just be careful don't bend it as you pull it out. Um, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and pull the shift servo out with it. All right. That comes out as one piece. Unplug the motor. And we'll unplug the shift servo. There's that unit. And then we'll go ahead and I think this is just glued on. So we'll just pop this guy off. Maybe. Yeah, it's just double sided tape. up before we retape it but whatever servo and motor screws there's the chassis so we're going from this to this one of the things I really like about this chassis is that it's uh, 
it's one of the only ones out there where you can use your stock body clips. So that's pretty sweet. They should consider selling these clips by themselves. Although I don't know if you could really, you'd have to have the mounting points for them um, on whatever chassis you decide to use. So maybe it wouldn't work. Maybe it doesn't matter. I guess if you want to use your stock body mounts, this is the chassis to get. Or you'd have to get real creative with whatever chassis you do get. Let's just try to get some of this off just to help uh, make our weight a little more comparable. All right, let's go ahead and weigh this guy. Stock chassis, interesting, 25 grams on the dot. And then this guy, I can already kind of feel it's heavier. Yep, 27.78, so almost 28 grams, almost three grams heavier. But my guess is most of that is gonna be because of the skid here. So it's gonna be giving you a little bit of that weight down low. So it's probably not a terrible thing. My guess is that uh, if you took the skid off, you're gonna see a pretty dramatic drop in the weight. I'm curious actually now, let's look. So it's 27, almost 28. Yeah, now we're at 19, so yeah, basically nine grams just in this guy. Eight grams, eight grams, that's right. So yeah, when you consider that, there's no way that this little bit of plastic here is eight grams. So it's definitely lighter uh, from the skid plate up on the carbon fiber and Delrin. Yeah, for sure. So that's a good thing. All right, we're going to get this guy back together, and then I guess we start looking at um, the other parts to upgrade. We're getting our electronics in. Let's get that stuff in because that's the stock stuff. That way you can see how it goes back stock. All right, so this guy should go back in just like it came out. Super, super easy. The only difference is instead of screwing straight into the mount for the shift servo here, we're going to be screwing through the carbon and using uh, lock nuts that came with. So there's two little lock nuts that came with nylon nuts we use those so let's go ahead and screw our transmission back down and then we'll do our servo interesting i didn't pay attention to where this little guy came from which one's the little guy i assume this one maybe Okay, that makes sense. So we're actually going to be using the screws that came with. There's four longer screws, two shorter screws. The shorter screws are for the servo. Longer screws are for the transmission. That makes more sense. Again, do not Loctite these screws if you're going into a plastic transmission housing. If you go into your stock transmission housing, just regular old screw them in, no Loctite. If you're going into a metal transmission housing, I would Loctite them. And again, never over tighten, just snug them in. Especially if you're Loctiting, you don't have to go tight, the Loctite will hold it, and into plastic, they usually don't back out of plastic, so you don't have to worry about that. And I think you'd rather lose a screw than strip the hole, right? You can always buy a new screw, but if you strip out the transmission housing, that's bad times. All right. Seems good. Little well, guys are just M4s, or not M4s, but four millimeter. Yeah, so the nut's pretty close to the servo. So you might just have to use some like needle nose pliers or something to hold the, the nut. Yeah. 
shouldn't have to Loctite these either because they're locked outs, right? Alrighty, guys. I think we're still golden there. Again, when you're doing this stuff, you just want to be careful not to bend your shift linkage here. You know what would have been nice is if they included little clips on here for a battery, for the rubber band, or some sort of way to hold the battery like the stock. That's something they're missing here. So that kind of sucks. Could have given us like a, just made the screw longer and then had it like stop. Actually, if you just put a real long screw in there, then you can use that to hold this on. We may do that. We'll probably do that. How long are these screws? Let's look. Let me back them up. I don't think they're very long. Yeah. Super short. They should have just given us some really long ones. Here's some M4 by 10s. Or M1.4. Sorry. By 10. We can take that guy. Screw it in. A lot of the way. Oh, yeah, nice. And then it eventually stops. You like hit the. Probably stops being threaded or something. And then there you go. Now you've got a place to hook your battery cable or rubber band. So, M1.4 by 10. And if you want it a little shorter, you could probably go by 8. Yeah, two millimeters shorter. That might be too short. You need enough sticking out so that the battery rubber band will go on there. Ta-da! All right. We'll put that back on later because we're going to route all of that wire and stuff. Let's see. So you're going to need some double-sided sticky tape. Throw this guy back in there. Now, this is going to make sh mounting the shocks kind of difficult because you've got to hold the nut. We'll have to use needle nose pliers. Get them down in there while we tighten the shock onto there. Um, can always just mount this later as well. We do want to mount it now. So we're going to do that. We have some double sided sticky here. Alrighty, wham bam, all done. Got it mounted up. We gotta just uh, figure out how we're gonna do our switch at some point. We'll do that later. I just wanna be able to make sure I can access where the shocks go. So, a rear steer servo, or shift servo, steering servo, we'll just plug right in from the front, obviously. So we're good to go here. All right, so if yours is stock, it's pretty much just the same. Now you just throw your, uh, your axles and links back on. Pretty straightforward. We're going to go ahead and do the rest of the upgrades on the axles and links and all the other stuff we have, and uh, then we'll get it back together. So if you're in stock, just go to the chapters below, and you can see where we put everything back together. All right, we got all of our stuff. We got our links, steering links, suspension links, our C-hubs, and our servo with servo mount. We're going to go ahead and get at it with our front axle. Again, unfortunately, I totally spaced out. This was a four-wheel steer rig. And so we actually need another set of these and another set of this and another set of this. So we'll look at that at some point. But for now, we'll just get this guy going. All right, so first thing I think I'm going to do is change over the servo and uh, our servo mount here. And I already see a problem. I don't know how this is going to mount in here with how long this servo is and our link unless the servo mount sits higher. We'll see. We'll see. Alrighty, it does mount above, so that's good. Um, we're definitely going to want to Loctite these, though. So we'll 
take a little bit of Loctite here. Alrighty, it looks like we have plenty of clearance in the bag, so that's good. The only downside to this is it raises your center of gravity just a little bit. Also means that you might hit on your um, chassis or your body, uh, but we'll see, we'll see. It's one of the only ways to really get a longer servo, stronger, more powerful servo, because of the way the rear link is designed, unless somebody was to redesign the way this link and axle are. Or you have to shim your uh, servo forward which isn't horrible either, shimming the servo forward. Now this little guy is 32 bucks. Um, they only offer it in red, unfortunately, and with the red servo horn, um, but it is what it is. Uh, it is much better than the stock servo. It's all metal, all metal. And um, the stats on it seem pretty good. I mean, I wish that they were, it, it did, you know, 6.5 volts or even 7.4 or 8.4, um, but it only does five to six volts uh, at six volts. It'll do 47 ounces uh, per inch, and then the speed is 0 0.07, so that's pretty quick. Um, seems like it'll be a good servo. We won't know until we really run it, but it seems seems decent. Um, again, 32 bucks, and then the mounts are $11 for the mount. All right, let's get our... I um, guess we can get our steering link going next. Actually, no, let's... Um, Let's do our suspension when we get this thing mounted back on the chassis. We'll do our straight link last because we got to center our servo. Also, there's the instructions that came with the servo. Nothing too special though. Right, we're going to go ahead and pull our upper link out. And we'll see how these guys go in there. These all printed the same. I bet they are, which means that some... Oh, no, they're not. Sweet. That way you can have the logo facing the correct direction. I dig it. Okay. Now I'm kind of curious how we're going to do this, because we're using stock shocks. Hmm. How is that going to work? That might be a issue here. We figured it out. You got to use the stock ball joint from the link. So you pop this guy out and then you're going to use this link ball joint in your shock. And just be aware the shocks do have one side that it goes in easier than the other. Um, at least it seems that way. Yeah, and then you mount your shock here or here or here, any of those three. All right, we're good, we're good. We just kind of lost there for a second. Okay. Just like so. Let's go ahead and change our C-hubs too. Actually, we'll do the rear, and then we'll change our C-hubs. More moments later. All right. <laughs> We've got both of our axle setups done. You can see how our links are, and then the shocks. Okay. And then there's our rear. So we ended up, we're going to have the steering links and the C-hubs and the new servo. We're, we got another setup so we can mirror this, the mount and everything. So we'll have that on the rear as well. Um, yeah, just totally spaced out when I got this stuff that it was rear steer. Ha! <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, now we're going to do our uh, C-hubs and our steering links on the front. Should be pretty easy. We'll do the C-hubs first. Actually, might as well just pull off the string link while we're at it. There's 
our first C-hub, pull that off, throw this guy on. Oh, let's put this in the screen here. Hmm. You know, unfortunately, the way it looks like this is set up, we can't put the screw on the back side. We like to put the screw usually on the back side to help with our steering. Um, although it is recessed, so hopefully it's not going to hit too hard. On the stock ones, your steering links hit right on the screw. So if you put the screw on the back of the C-Hub, um, it basically gives you a little bit more so your steering link does not hit. See that? See how that's going to hit right there on the screw? When you put the screw up, we hadn't done it on this one yet, but when you put the screw in the back, you get more turning radius out of it. So we'll see how that works on here. Let's get this guy back in here. It looks like he's your stock bushings, so we'll throw the bushings back in. Might want our axle go in there. All right, there we go. What we need are some aluminum portal housings. The whole portal housing in aluminum. That's what we really need. Yeah, it actually looks like our steering knuckle is going to be hitting right there just a little bit. You could always dremel this down some more, but they should have chamfered it just a little more right there. I don't know if you can see it. But when you compare this side to that side, on servo wire, go away. You can see this side gets a little bit more turning. See that? The mount's almost all the way under the screw, whereas this, there's like a space between the screw and the uh, knuckle mount, steering link mount. So that's unfortunate. Looks like we'll lose just a little bit of turn radius here. Um, maybe if they were to design portal housings, they could make sure that there's a little bit of space on the front and back of the portal housing, just a little bit, so that you get that turn radius back. Again, worst case, you could always dremel this right here. It's just they, they needed to chamfer it just a little further up, right in here. And then you'd have so much more turn radius. That's a bummer. That's okay. Um... We want the blue. That's the bad part, too, is we can't just dremel it because then we mess up the, the pretty blue. But uh, we're still going to have decent turn radius, so I'm not too, too worried about it. Plus, this is more of a trail truck. So we don't need crazy turn radius. Plus, we have rear steer, I guess, so we don't need turn radius at all. What am I thinking? <laughs> all right, let's do our other side, and we'll be back. And that's what it looks like. They dig them. They look good. We can go ahead and do our steering link now. And this comes with some new screws, so we'll be using those. Yeah, see, if you're able to put the screws behind, I know it's hard to see, but the steering link hits on the screw. And if the screw was in the back side, then you get more turn angle. So I guess it doesn't really matter that the knuckle was hitting here if they're going to have the screw there anyway. Um, so it's probably about the same as stock. You know, if you're going to leave your screw in the front on your stock, you're having the same turn radius versus moving the screw to the back because it's definitely hitting the screw before it hits the uh, knuckle and the C-hub. But again, if they move the screw to the back, then you get even more turn radius. And then if they chamfer that, you get even more turn radius. But again, this is pretty much what you're going to have with the stock setup. So now you have just pretty blue and durability, which is good. But it would have been a nice bonus to have the screw in the back and to have that chamfered and get a ton of turn radius. All right. Now we gotta let's go ahead and we're gonna install our uh, axles back into our chassis and then we'll do the servo horn. Alright, so with this, you've got these little bushings here, and these bushings go right inside 
They're kind of a pain on the stock one. And one of the tricks I learned is to put your driver through and then you can put your bushing on the driver and then pull it through or, or hold it while you push it through. And then you've got your bushing like that. All right, so we'll hold it like that, keep it on the side so it doesn't fall out. And then we can take our link. Actually, it's gonna be our upper link. And I guess our screw just goes right back into the upper link. You don't use any bolt or, um, excuse me, like nut. So we'll do this first. Maybe we should just use our stock screws. These are way too long. These ones are our stock screws, so we'll use these. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Now we're gonna go into our drive shaft before we start getting our shocks and stuff in. Make sure your drive shaft is in phase. I talk about it a lot. It just means making sure that the ears on this are lined up. That'll prevent vibration at high speeds and stuff. You don't want it like that, right? See how the ears are not lined up? You got the ear on the side, the ear on the top. That's not what you want. You want it like this. It's called being in phase, okay? We're going to go ahead and get our lower links in. I'm actually going to get a little Loctite on this. And the other side. All right, everything feels nice and smooth. Dig that. Now we just have to do our shocks. Figure out how we want to do it. I guess we'll just put them all the way back in the back. One downside to moving our shocks here is we lose that angle, right? You have a little bit less angle than if they were still mounted up to the front here. So that's kind of unfortunate. Um, it also looks like it's going to raise our ride height a little bit. So in and knowing that, it would have been nice to have some further back shock mounting points. If we were to have a stretched front end, it wouldn't be such a big deal because then our shock angle would be more like this. But yeah, you definitely want your shocks more at an angle, just a little bit more, at least to get some better articulation. Now, being that this is a trail truck, um, it's not quite as big of a deal. Um, you just do lose a lot of articulation. And this is what I was talking about by the servo sitting higher. We don't get full compression out of our shocks. Right? Unless we move our shocks down, but then we're, if we do that, we are raising our ride height. So we can move our shocks down, and then that would probably get us full compression. Oh, well, not quite. Almost. Very, very, very close. Very close. Um, but then, like I said, your ride height is much higher. Look how, look how tall that is. Your pinion angle and everything is not ideal. So... We're going to definitely put it here. I wish we had just a little bit more, but then we'd have issues with our battery, I suppose. Um, what I really wish is that this was able to be mounted here at the original mounting position. It probably won't be so bad on the back. The back will be fine, but the fronts, it's kind of rough. Because like I said, you lose a lot of shock angle there. Anyway, right, we're going to go ahead and put this in. And this, we're going to be using a nut. So that's one of the supplied nuts. And we're going to have to use some needle nose. With these guys, you're definitely going to want to use some Loctite. Just make sure you don't get it on your shock housing here. That would be bad news. So I'll just get a little bit on the screw. And then... Okay, let's get this side going. All right, we're good. I do kind of wish there were multiple locations here for our upper link 
so that we could move it forward because ideally I would like to have it the, the drive shaft and the pinion clocked just a little bit more this way just a little bit having the caster essentially is what this is this way is good because you want to get your steering link out of the way for climbing and stuff like that you do want a little bit of an angle but this is almost too much um, so having this be adjustable front and back would be kind of nice Although using those big bushings, you'd have to have pretty good sized holes and you do weaken the chassis by doing that. You can see here, right? That's a pretty big hole. So I don't know, maybe not. There's there's always trade-offs. It does seem like these upper links needed to be just a tad longer, just like a millimeter or a half a millimeter even. Or these links just a little shorter. But I think we're going to be fine. All right, so that's how the front works. The rear is going to work the same. We'll come back once the rear is all the way on so we can check it out. Look at that. We're all buttoned up a little bit, as good as we're going to get right now. Now we just need to put our servo horn on and then try to put our body and bed back on, see what our bed looks like. That's a concern I kind of have is what the bed's going to look like because there's a, a brace here that we're missing, and the bed has a hole for these the shock towers and the brace. So there's just gonna be a big hole there. So we'll see. Um, I can always remake it. It's just popsicle sticks. So we'll see. All right, let's uh, plug this all in, get our servo straight and uh, get our horn on. So make sure you're completely centered on your tram, get everything turned on, servo's working. And then you can shut this off once you're sure you're centered. Shut her down, shut her down and get your horn on. Is this going to go in the back? Yeah, it looks like it's going to go on the back side. So, I mean, I guess we could go. No, you got to do it like this. I'm just going to check real quick before we tighten anything down. Yeah, it looks about where we want it. So, we can go ahead and button this up. Actually, we're going to Loctite this guy for sure. And if we really want to be secure about it, we can throw one of these nuts on there. Like so. And then we'll center up as much as we can. Make sure your steering is centered, and then you can drop your horn on. A little off there. Now we're good. Every time, I wish they would put an actual hex screw for the servo horn screw. It's like no company out there does that. I think, I think there's been one. One time I've come across a servo, aftermarket servo, that had a hex screw instead of a Phillips head. I don't know why they all insist on using Phillips heads. It's strange to me. All right, let's plug it back in, turn it back on. We will check our steering. Seems pretty responsive. Don't forget to set your endpoints if you notice that it's going a little crazy. Our dual rate right here. So, can I get this to stand up? No. Oh, yeah, there we go. So, your dual rate or your endpoints are is how far your servo will push. Okay. And so, you don't want it to go too far. Oh, let's see what, what just happened there. Sure. That was weird. I think our batteries are dying in our transmitter. Son of a... A little longer than a few minutes later. All right. New batteries in. So anyway, when you're at max turn, you want to make sure your dual rate is not... You're not pushing. The servo is not pushing even though it 
is physically stopped, right? Like it can't go any further. So we should not turn it up anymore. See, we want to turn it down until it starts to move back. There we go, right there. And then that's kind of our, our max turn radius, okay? If you end up having your servo and it's trying to push, even though it can't, you're gonna end up burning up the servo or breaking something. Um, when you're running dog bones, you need to make sure that you're not pushing past like the maximum that the dog bone can handle. Yeah, let me turn this guy down just a little bit. I can actually hear it in the servo. That's good, that's good. Everything's still working there, seems good. Nice. We've got our transmission set up on our channel four. We have a video on that stuff. Um, we basically switched our, we'll do the, the four wheel steering videos over here. That way, if you want to check it out, you can check it out. We put our uh, steering rear steer right here on our channel three and then moved our uh, transmission to channel four. Pretty cool. All right, guys, let's see if we can get the body on and then we're gonna do the wheels. Forgot to show our little battery strap holder. So you basically take your rubber band, bring it over, twist it halfway, bring it back down, and you're good to go. So that seems to work well. All right, let's get our body on. Well, that's a bummer. We would have to uh, modify our bed here quite a bit to get our shock towers to fit through. So right now the shock towers are too long too wide, too long, whatever. And they don't fit through the holes, so that's unfortunate. So we'll have to figure out something. Maybe we'll redo the bed here, which makes me kind of sad. We have to recut the holes, redo our uh, wood. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll have to look at that. Guess we'll run it without the bed for now. And they couldn't have anticipated that we were going to have the bed set up like that. So well, that all clipped on pretty well. I was just trying to make sure none of the wires were hitting or anything like that. Yeah, those clips are pretty nifty. I'm digging it. Just missing my bed already. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll do something different with this one. Throw the bed on something else. One of the issues with this one and the bed was because we had rear steer, it was actually kind of, it would hit the bed. It wasn't necessarily the uh, the best setup anyway, even on the stock chassis uh, with all the stock parts, the rear steer and the bed did not play very well together. So maybe we just say, meh, we'll do the bed on something else. So another little minor issue that we have right here is our servo ears kind of hit on our mounts just a little bit if you like really push it and actually they'll hit on the chassis see that if you're really articulating so that's something we might have to look at at some point again if you're doing a hardcore crawler this chassis is probably not the chassis for you or if it is you're gonna have to do a lot of customizing which is fine you usually have to anyway um but yeah, it's definitely kind of hitting on there. You're not kind of, it is hitting. But again, as a trail truck, totally fine. I'm not too worried about it. And really, we need to get some aftermarket shocks. We need to get some better shocks as well. Um, yeah. All right, let's get our wheels and tires going. All right, so these wheels are what we are excited for. They're one of the main reasons we wanted to get this look going on. We think these wheels are super sharp looking. They're 1.3s, okay? So they're the same diameter as the stock, which is pretty cool. You could use a stock tire, which is what we're gonna do just because that's what we have right now. Um, we could throw some other tires on there, but again, I wanna show them with the stocks. Maybe we'll change it up later. We're gonna get these off and get them on here. And uh, yeah, we'll be back. So when I first got into these, I was like, how in the heck are these tires going to beadlock on. Put them on and they just they just spin. And then we realized, see like this. What the heck? Then we realized something. You're supposed to use the stock inner rings. So you can go ahead and put your inner ring in. 
and then you can put your barrel in or your face and then your ring and it will lock in nice and tight okay that really threw us for a loop at first we couldn't figure out are you supposed to glue them nope you gotta use your stock ring another thing we were trying to do is put some 1.0s on there and these are some smaller 1.0s and you can stretch them problem is it's really hard to get the bead and the ring on top of the bead here right so when you got it like this when it's a 1.0 it's like that right like it, it collapses all the way in and so you have to try to stretch it out and what we found was that the best way to do it i figured i'd just show you real quick and it, it's probably a lot easier if you have a much larger tire um, again these are not very tall i'm not sure what size these are but like here's some endura pin comps so they're, they're smaller than the pin comps these are just some aliexpress tires okay so they, they would need to be a little closer to actual uh the, the stock size in outer diameter there's there you go just so you know it would probably make it a lot easier but here's how we're gonna how we did it we went ahead and threw our inner ring in and then getting the tire around the the barrel or the face is is the easy part right so you want to just kind of get your bead all the way to the edge and then go ahead and push it into your into your inner ring just trying to get our inner ring there we go the key is to get the bead to be folded the correct direction, right? So it's got to tuck in. So you kind of just have to pull on the, the tire to get the bead to fold in versus try to push out. There we go. And you get your rear to set well. And again, these wheels aren't really designed for 1.0s. I'm forcing it. And then you have to pull your tire onto the ring, the inner ring. Just kind of pull the whole tire back out. And I'll tell you what, it's a real pain in the butt. But you can make it work if you really wanted to push it. So now we're kind of tucked back, right? See that? Then you're going to take your carbon fiber ring and you're going to push your screws all the way through. Or screw them all the way in, whatever. You just need to get them to, they're tight enough to kind of feel like they're threaded, but once you're all the way through, you can just spin it. But you need to get the screws all the way down and then you can come into here and you literally just want to screw in like maybe a half just enough to get it to thread maybe one turn one full turn maybe maybe one and a half full turns just enough to get it to thread okay as long as you're all threaded in you should be good you want to make sure the ring stays away <laughs> from the inner ring and then it's kind of like doing a real tire. You have to keep the inner ring down because you're trying to get the bead to slip in into here. So you're going to pull it up and it's it's not easy, guys. Especially since the ring wants to come forward. See that? See how the ring wants to kind of come forward? And you want, the, you want to keep the ring back and let the bead kind of fall into there and you cannot let it pop out. If it pops out, you're in a bad place. And it is a real pain in the butt. So you got to keep pushing the ring back while you're trying to pull the bead forward. Not easy. See, we already popped the bead out. So, as long as you, if you can keep them on the screws, that's that helps a lot too. If they pop, if it does, see, we're totally popped out now. So now again, like a real tire, you kind of got to go in and try to tuck the bead in and see if you can get it to stay in there. And if we got it once. While you're doing this though, you can like push on the back inner ring, push on the back side, and it helps push the inner ring. And it's just a pain in the butt, guys. It's really difficult. And so I'm not gonna waste your time showing you, but that's essentially what you gotta do. And then you gotta tuck the bead in behind the uh, the carbon fiber. Um, this would probably be a lot easier if you just cut the bead off, right? Completely cut the tire, just like they're doing the 1.8s, um, but you do it with the 1.3. So if you trim that in, it'll fit a lot better. You just don't want to overcut it. So like just cut the bead off, maybe a little more. Again, I think it would be much easier with larger tires, but we're done showing this because like I said, it's a real pain. Try to hopefully, yeah, no way is it gonna happen right now. We just gotta get it to drop into that hole, that slot and get it to tuck under it and then tighten your screws down. Again, we got it once, um, but it took some effort. So. so we'll just go ahead and do it on our stocks here much much easier just kind of tuck your carbon in there pull your bead out a little bit 
Get your screws in. And we don't go all the way down with the screws until we get all the screws kind of snugged. Then we'll go in and we'll, we'll tighten it. Generally, you want to go kind of in a cross pattern or a star pattern. You can see we didn't completely, but close enough. As long as you're just not tightening them all the way down, and then you got to kind of make sure your bead and your lip is good. If you have to pull it out a little bit, pull it out a little bit. Uh, but it should be golden, and then you can tighten them all down. Again, do not over tighten these. They are a little tight to get out from the factory. It looks like the screws already had Loctite on them. So just be careful not to strip the screw heads when you're trying to unscrew them. Make sure you're all the way in the hex with your driver. All right, and there you go. Bam. Okay, also make sure when you're putting your tires back on, you have two going this way, and then on the opposite side, they're also going forward. That way you don't have some like this and some like this. Okay, you want them two going one direction, two going the other direction. That way when you put them on, they're both facing the same direction, both sides. All right, we're gonna do the rest and we're gonna get them on. Man, those look good. I mean, these are the main reason we ended up getting this stuff. Uh, we wanted to check these out. We had a lot of people asking about these wheels and uh, some people thought they were glue-ons. Like I said, when we first got it, uh, we were unsure, but they are true B-locks. They hold the tire, it's not coming off, and they look fantastic. I just wish that some more people would make some 1.3 tires, because um, these stock tires aren't the best, but they'll do for now. Um, we'll, we'll try to find something. If you happen to know about some 1.3 tires that are out there, uh, why don't you put them in the comments below so everybody else knows and we can check them out as well, because um, we definitely want to get some some better tires for sure um, but the wheels are just man they make it pop it's awesome it looks so good wish the servo horn was blue or silver but that's okay we also need to figure out our bed situation don't know what we're going to do there yet like i said we're going to have to cut for the shock towers here uh, and maybe like i said maybe we'll just remake it redo all of the woodwork because we can actually cover this hole now um, we don't need that brace spot there because this used to sit like this, right? Which looked kind of cool, but it's not really very scale. At least now we can be a little bit more scale um, and only have the two shock holes for the shock towers. Yeah, we should we should be good there if we were to widen these up. We could even make them more narrow now. Well, maybe not. It depends on how the shocks are mounted. Um, either way, we can adjust it. We can make it fit. Or maybe we just stretch this guy out. And we get rid of this. And we stretch it out. Because we do have this. Hmm. Could be good. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I know we went over a lot of stuff. It was kind of long. But we wanted to show all the stuff and talk about it. And uh, like I said, this is one of the only chassis out there that uh, has stock mounting positions for your bodies. So that is super, super cool. Um, again, all this stuff, we'll link to it in the description below. It'll take you straight over to Next Speed site. Um, don't confuse Next Speed with Next Racing. They're two different companies. They both make mini parts, but uh, they are two different companies. They are not the same. So Next Speed is what we've got here. Um, we may have some Next Racing stuff coming up at some point. I think we have some TRX4M stuff uh, that we'll be showing. So. Keep an eye out for those videos. We got it. Just took a little minor trimming here. Not much actually at all. So that's pretty cool. But we still got this giant hole here. Maybe we can put like a plate under here. So it looks like it's bolted onto some steel plate or like a fuel cell looking type thing. So we can put like a diamond plate under there with a little spout. So it looks like there's a fuel cell under there. That could look really cool. So maybe we'll do that. But yeah, we got it on. Pretty sweet. Digging it. We need to get a license plate on there. We've got license plates. We need to put one on there. Bam!
We got the shop on there. Colorado license plates. Yeah, buddy. Um, these guys are from RC Plate Shop. We have a video on them right over here. So make sure you check that out if you're interested in some scale plates. They make a bunch of different sizes. Pretty awesome. All right, guys. We appreciate all the subs, all the views. Please like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. Do all those things you do at the end of videos you like. And uh, yeah, we appreciate every single sub. It's just a click for you, but it means the world to me. Um, and uh, your comments. I love your comments. I try to reply to every single comment. At some point, I'm not going to be able to. But for now, I reply to every single one that I can. So if you have any questions or comments, please uh, let us know. All right. Build something awesome, guys. And uh, smash them, crash them, and bash them. But don't break the expensive parts.